It's 2014. You've bought a new PC, but you're having frequent BSODs. So you contact your friend Joe, who is a technical expert, according to you, and he tells you to update the device drivers. The next day, while you try to get some cracked softwares, you notice this. You click on the link to download the so-called driver updater and the software is currently searching for outdated drivers in your system. In a few minutes, you decide to close the browser and open the file explorer, but you can't. What just happened might look strange to the eyes of an unsuspecting user. What if I tell you that a ransomware has already encrypted much of your personal data? In a few minutes, your system goes into complete lockdown and you find this. Recently, I made a Linux video and you guys loved it. So today, I'll be diving deeper into Linux security and give you a better understanding of how Linux security works. Linux market share is low, providing Linux with an added advantage over operating systems. Still, at the same time, some measures immunize Linux to a greater extent. This is Deep. You're watching Arc Technologies. Let us dive into the basics. Linux is a kernel, a core component of an operating system that controls a computer's CPU, memory and peripherals, often considered to have a stripped down user interface. Without all the user focused bells and whistles, it is designed purely to be functional and allows users a significant degree of control over their hardware. Security has been the cornerstone of the Linux operating system since its inception. Now, each user has to be walled up from other users and a user password and ID are required for individuals to use Linux that is known but users also have lower automatic access rights which makes it harder for them to perpetuate the spread of malware by accessing a wide range of files on the computer. The open source format with many different operating environments, system architecture and components such as other email clients also make it much more difficult for malware to sweep through. Built-in kernel security differences starting with firewalls. In networking, a packet is a small segment of a larger message. One such packet consists of two portions, the header and the payload. The packet filtering firewall on Linux filters incoming and outgoing network packets based on the packet header information. Then comes the UEFI Secure Boot Firmware Verification. When a computer is turned off, its software including operating systems, application code and data remains stored on non-volatile memory. When the computer is powered on, it typically does not have an operating system loaded in the random access memory. The computer first executes a relatively small program stored in the read-only memory along with some needed data to initialize the RAM. Then it has access to the non-volatile memory from which the operating system programs and data can be loaded into RAM. UEFI Secure Boot is a verification mechanism for ensuring that the controller device boots only software components that are trusted. UEFI Secure Boot verifies the software components sequentially starting with verifying the signature of the bootloader. Next comes the Linux kernel lockdown. Now, the kernel lockdown feature is designed to prevent direct and indirect access to a running kernel image to protect it against unauthorized modification of the kernel image and also control access to security and cryptographic data located in the kernel memory while still permitting driver modules to be loaded. Next is Linux file ownership. Every Linux system has three types of owners. That is user and user is the one who created the file. A user can create, delete or modify the file. By default, whosoever creates the file becomes the owner of the file. Now next is a group. A group can contain multiple users. All of the users have the same access permissions for a file. And others, that is anyone with access to the file other than the user and the group falls in the other category. Other has neither created the file nor is a group member. Now users and groups can be locally managed in etc slash psswd or etc slash group. Now look at the snapshot. All the files and the directories have the same users and group. Now the first column denotes the user and the second column represents the group. Even uh, viewing the properties of a file gives the ownership information of that file. Now let us go back to the ransomware example. In Linux file ownerships are strict and software installations are very safe. Now you can use their official repositories using apt like in 
Ubuntu or even install softwares without elevated privileges with package managers like Flatback. Now, no elevated privileges mean that the software has only access to files under its ownership and hence protecting your system up to a greater extent. Next is memory management. Memory access and management plays a crucial role in the security of NOS. There are various or memory management models adopted by different operating system. In this video, let us compare uh, Linux with another operating system that is VxWorks. Now I'm taking the example of VxWorks just to compare it with Linux since VsWorks has a different approach to memory management. In operating systems like VxWorks, the flat memory model has been followed where the user and kernel space are not well separated. Here the system allocates memory into the physical address space. Typical VxWorks doesn't have virtual memory support since physical memory is directly available for access security threat prevails in the operating system as the malware program can manipulate the memory and even bring down the system. Whereas in Linux, user space and kernel space are well separated. The actual physical address allocation for any process will not be displayed to the users. For example, try printing the address of the parent and the child processes using the fork system call. The address of both parent and child processes will be the same, the virtual address. This is because any application can access only the virtual address, which is mapped to a physical address. Due to this, no damage can be done to the actual physical address. The way of managing memory in Linux makes Linux more secure. Last but not the least is the advantage of open source. Open sourced code is constantly under public review, which is being checked for vulnerabilities. Now just think of lakhs of developers in the world contributing to the betterment of Linux. Incredible, isn't it? Other than that, the security measures I've mentioned above, there is SA Linux, maintaining system records and more, which help in prevent the attack of malwares. So that's all for this video. Do like, share and subscribe. I'll catch you in the next one. Also do comment what you think about the animations and all I've upgraded to a great extent. And that's all.